Hey everybody, Dragonhawk Guy here with another off-season update for all the 12s out there in Seahawks Nation. Today is April 20th, 2020. Before we get started, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, and be sure to hit the notification button to let you know the very second a video posts to my page. Also, be sure to comment in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think of the Seahawks offseason so far. Let me know what you think of the signings the Seahawks did earlier today. And let me know what your hopes are for draft week this week. That's right, it is now draft week in the NFL and for the Seahawks. But before we get to that, we got to get to a couple of free agent signings the Seahawks did today. First up today is a couple of free agent signings, or should I say restricted free agent signings, as the Hawks bring back a couple of weapons for Russell Wilson to use in the offense next year. First up is tight end Jacob Hollister, who started last season on the practice squad, but by the end of the season was pretty much the Seahawks' number one tight end. He signs a one-year deal worth $3.259 million dollars. Not a bad chunk of change for a guy who was on the practice squad last year. Second up was wide receiver David Moore, who at times was the number three wide receiver for the Hawks last year. He gets a one-year deal worth $2.133 million. Moore and Hollister were two of the Seahawks' four restricted free agents from last year's team. All four had until last Friday to sign a deal with another team. None of them did it, so Moore and Hollister are back in the fold. And Brandon Jackson and Joey Hunt still out there as restricted free agents. Second up is the NFL Draft. That is right, the NFL Draft is finally here. It is a couple of days away, and the Seahawks and the rest of the NFL today took part in a mock draft to practice the first virtual draft in NFL history. Interesting article on ESPN talking about the NFL's practice virtual draft so that the teams can hopefully work out all the kinks so that by the time we get to Thursday and the first round of the NFL Draft, things go smoothly. Also in there is a relatively deep dive into the Seahawks draft process under Pete Carroll and John Schneider since they took over in 2010 and what they do with the first round over the past decade. I'm not going to go into too much of it here, but it's a really interesting read. Check it out. If you look at most people's mock drafts over the last couple of weeks or even the last couple of months, it seems like most people think the Seahawks are going to take at the 27th pick assuming they keep the 27th pick, which is far from a certainty given it's Pete Carroll and John Schneider. Most people seem to think it comes down to three possible players that the Seahawks might choose. First is Michigan center Cesar Ruiz. Second is TCU defensive tackle Russ Blacklock. And third is Penn State defensive end Yeecher Gross Matos. My personal favorite is Yeecher Gross Matos. Not just because he's a defensive end, not just because he's that five technique guy that can rush the passer, and not just because he has an engine that won't quit. Seriously, read this article on ESPN from last year. It's really, really moving. It tell, it's a deep dive into Yeecher Gross Matos' story, and man, he has an amazing story that he has had to overcome in his life. He lost so much so young, and for a guy to keep that motivation and keep fighting and keep playing hard every single play, this is a guy that will fit perfectly with the Seahawks system, with the Seahawks way of doing things, and he is a guy that you can truly root for. Seriously, read that article if you haven't read it before. It, it's, it's an amazing look at Yeecher Gross Matos' childhood and what he had to overcome. And third up today, it wouldn't be an off-season update without a Jadavian Clowney update. And the Jadavian Clowney update today comes from Tennessee Titans general manager John Robinson. Pro Football Talk is reporting that Robinson was on a conference call with reporters on Monday and the team hadn't, quote, inched closer to that finality, unquote, before adding that their draft haul might move them closer to a final decision on how to proceed. He said, quote, who we pick could potentially impact that. <laughs> so how do you mention a player without mentioning a player and yet still mention the player? That's how you mention the player. Clearly, John Robinson liking the theatrics of the moment. And I also think clearly Jadavian Clowney hoping all this attention is going to drive up the price. But personally, I don't think this is going to help his cause. I think the longer he waits, the longer it's not going to help him getting the price point he wants. And finally up today, we have one last signing to mention. 
the Seahawks bring back offensive lineman Khalil McKenzie, who spent all of last year on the practice squad. So hopefully he'll provide some depth to the Seahawks offensive line and maybe have a chance to break out during training camp. I've been Dragon Hawk Guy. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also be sure to comment in the comment section down below. Let me know who you hope the Seahawks draft on Thursday. And also let me know, do you think the Seahawks did a good thing bringing back Jacob Hollister and David Moore to the team for 2020? Like, share, subscribe, comment down below. I'll see you next time. See ya.